Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sir Razzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session guys, we're going to be talking about the force on a conducting wire within a magnetic field and using the formula F is equal to BIL sine of the angle theta. Alright, and before we get going, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Let's get everyone that grade in physics. Right, so first of all, let's have a quick recap about uh, what happens when you pass current through a wire within a magnetic field. Okay, so as you can see in this diagram over here, we have a wire. As you can see, yes, we've got a terminal over here, and we're going to run a wire. Here's our wire, and it's going to go around in a square. We're going to place it within a magnetic field over here. So look, this is like a bar magnet, which has been curved right now. We've got a north here and a south here. Right, so right now um, we know that there's going to be a magnetic field between these two poles. Don't forget the field goes out of the north and into the south. Out of the north and into the south. So it's going from left to right in this case here. What happens when we connect the switch here? What happens when we press the switch? What will happen to this wire? Okay, right, so hopefully you have identified that. When you connect the switch, number one, the current flows through this wire. The current will flow through this wire, so it's going to go... Don't forget, it goes from the positive to the negative. It's going to go round the back and down uh, in this diagram over here. All right, so the first thing to note is that when current passes through the wire, what happens is a magnetic field will be generated around the wire here. So look, you can see the wire right now, and a magnetic field will be generated. I'm going to use uh, purple as a color, so we know that a magnetic field is going to be generated around the wire. There we go, so purple. So purple equals... Uh, magnetic field from wire. Don't get confused with the other one which is going to be the green one that's the magnetic field from the permanent magnets and also so let's put it down here green equals magnetic field from permanent magnets from permanent magnets here. Okay right so we've now got our key on the board here so when current passes through the wire we know that a magnetic field is induced around the wire. And that there we go, it's going to be in purple over here. So what will happen is that the magnetic field from the permanent magnet and the magnetic field from the wire will interact and a force will be experienced by the wire. So, uh, so we'll just highlight it. So first of all, to start, when current passes through the wire, a magnetic field is induced around the wire. Hopefully we should know that. Yes, don't forget, current passes through the wire, we generate a field going around it. Uh, and then the second point, the magnetic field around the wire, which is in purple, will interact with the magnetic field from the permanent magnet, with this one over here. And therefore, a force is experienced by the wire. So a force is going to be experienced by the wire here. And if you want to know the direction of the force, um, you can take the left-hand rule. Don't forget, uh, the field is going from north to south, so it's going to the left, yes, from north to south and the uh, current's coming towards us, it's a 3D diagram, we can see that my thumb is pointing upwards everyone, and therefore the force is going to be upwards over here, so my force is experienced by the wire. So we know that a force is experienced by that wire over here. Hopefully we've seen that lower down in school, but we're going to do this in a bit more detail now because this is obviously uh, advanced A-level physics. Right, so what happens if we look at this whole thing now, on a, at a bird's eye view. What about the following? So look, right now guys, let's try and redraw the same diagram, bird's eye view. So we know the field is going like this, the permanent field going across over here, and the wire is like this. Imagine you were to look at that top down, yes? You would see the following. You'd see, so you, right on top of this, you'd see the field lines go across. And what will happen is, you know that um, the wire over here will be going like this, that's the wire. I'm only looking for the wire within the field over here. So now we've got the wire within the field over here. Okay, right, now from here we can talk about the factors affecting the force experience. So we know that there's going to be a force. We did identify that there's going to be a force. The factors affecting um, the magnitude of that force are going to be number one, the length of the wire. So we know that force is proportional to the length of the wire within the field. Uh, we also know that the force is also proportional to the strength of that field, which is the magnetic flux density, which is B. We also know that the force is proportional to the current passing through that wire as well. So the greater the current, the greater the force. The greater that field, the greater the force. And the greater the length of the wire, the greater the force as well. So it ends up being the following. We can then combine them to make the following formula. 
The force on that wire is going to be equal to the magnetic flux density times by the current flowing through that wire times by the length of the wire perpendicular to the field. So look, in this diagram, look, we can see that the length of the wire is perpendicular to that field over here. All right, in symbol terms, uh, we can get that down. So F is equal to B, I, I for current, obviously, B for magnetic flux density, L over here. Okay, wonderful stuff. So this, guys, is our formula for the force on a conducting wire within a magnetic field. Units, uh, force measured in newtons. Magnetic flux density is going to be capital T for Tesla. I is going to be the current, going to be in amps, and L is going to be in meters over here. Don't forget, this is if it's perpendicular, guys. So this formula only applies if the current in the wire is perpendicular to the field. So this only occurs when it's perpendicular. I'll put that in brackets over here. So this only applies when B and I are perpendicular. So you can use the following formula, F is equal to BIL, or F is equal to Bill. Uh, make sure you understand the diagram so far and we understand the physics behind it. Right, so let's do the following. So we know when the wire is perpendicular, we can use this. What about when the wire is not perpendicular to the field? What can we do? All right, okay, so look, I've got two more diagrams. Don't forget, this is still the bird's eye picture from before. As you can see, we've got the length of wire over here. So this is my length of wire within my field. Uh, and look, we've got the length of wire at a slightly different angle over here. Right, um, we're gonna add an angle right now. This is going to be theta. So we're going to add the angle theta right now. So, so theta, guys, we're going to define it over here, is the angle between the wire and the field. So look, this is theta in this diagram over here, and look, theta is smaller in this diagram over here. That's going to be the value of theta. So theta is equal to the angle between the wire and the field, guys. Okay, right, and from here, we're going to look at the following. So theta, we know, is the angle between the wire and the field. And over here, guys, you can see that theta is equal to 90 degrees, everyone. Yes, 90 degrees. Don't forget that angle is 90 degrees between the wire and the field. And over here, theta is not 90 degrees over here. Right, so we can now adapt our formula. We know that's actually, I need to draw one more diagram. Let's quickly draw it. So let's just draw the field over here. We're going to just tilt the wire so that it's going to be like this, everyone. So that's my wire right now. That's my wire with current passing through it. Don't forget that's my wire with current passing through it here. Um, okay, right. So in this one, theta is, what's the angle between the wire and the field here? Well, hopefully you can see that the wire and the field, there is no angle, so it's going to be zero. The wire and the field, there's no angle here. Right, so we know that the orientation of the wire within the field will obviously get a force. Is it going to be maximum or minimum? We know that it's going to get a maximum value of force in this direction over here. So we know that the force is maximum. Force is maximum over here. Why? Because the wire and the field are perpendicular. And look, in this one that's over here, uh, we know that the force is going to be zero. Why? Because they are parallel. Don't forget, in the left-hand rule, we know that the field and current must be perpendicular to get that force. If, they are, if the current in the wire is parallel to the field, you won't get a force being experienced. So therefore, we can adapt this into our following formula. F is equal to B I L, but look, we can incorporate theta, sine of the angle theta over here. So sine of the angle theta, that's what we can do. Hopefully that makes sense to you, yes? Because look, in this one, uh, we know that F is equal to B I L, and then sine 90, and don't forget, sine of 90 is one. So therefore, F is equal to B I L. Everyone happy with that? Because the sine of 90 is, so let's put it down here, sine 90 is equal to 1. And the opposite one over here, we know that, um, look, in this one, we know that uh, theta is 0. So the same formula, F is equal to B I L sine of the angle 0. If you type sine 0 into a calculator, sine 0 is going to be uh, 0. So this one, obviously, F will be equal to 0. There we go. So look, it clearly works that we now have a formula that F is equal to B I L sine of the angle theta. My only bit of advice to you is that make sure you understand what theta is. It's the angle between the wire and the field, guys, and you can identify it from this diagram here. Okay, right, so we now have this formula. Let's try a little question. Okay, so here we go. A wire of length 10 centimeters is placed within a magnetic field of magnetic flux density 40 millitesla, as shown in the diagram. Calculate the force experienced by the wire if the current is 0.1 amps. Okay, so first of all, we've got our little thing over here. Uh, let's add a couple of things. We know that length of the wire 
this length of the wire is going to be equal to 0.1 meters. That's going to be this one over here. Uh, now let's calculate the force. So we know that F is equal to B I L sine of the angle theta. Okay, right. So we can just list out what we've got here. Uh, we know that B is equal to 40 millitesla. You must. Uh, we know that the current is equal to 0.1 amps. Don't forget, you don't like millitesla. The formula is in tesla. So this is going to be 40 times by 10 to the minus 3 tesla over here. That's going to be this. The length of the wire within the field is 0.1 meters over here, BIL. And then it's going to be sine, sine of the angle uh, theta. So we know what theta is as well. Theta is going to be 20 degrees. So there we go, we've got it all, we can plug it in. So F is equal to 40 times by 10 to the minus three, Tesla times by 0.1 amps, times by the length of the wire, 0.1, uh, yes, 0.1 uh, meters, times by sine of the angle 20. There we go, let's chuck that into a calculator. And here we go guys, you can see that the force on the conducting wire is equal to 1.37 times by 10 to the minus 4 newtons, guys. And there we go. And that's it for another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. I hope you enjoyed it and make sure you understand where the formula comes from, that F is equal to BIL sine theta can be used to calculate the force on a wire which has been placed perpendicular within a magnetic field and a current is passing through it. And there you go guys, we've done for another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. Let's have a quick recap right from the top. Okay, so today's title was going to be Force on a Conducting Wire Within a Magnetic Field and proving the formula F is equal to B I L sine of the angle theta. I drew this diagram to remind us that when you have a wire which has current flowing through it perpendicular to a field, the magnetic field induced on the wire will induce its own magnetic field which will interact with the magnetic field from the permanent magnet and the force is experienced. You can use the left hand rule to determine the direction of the force. But to work out the magnitude and value of the force we're going to use a formula. So from here I then talked about viewing it on a bird's eye view. So if you viewed it bird's eye view it looks like this. Um, and we can see that the force on the conducting wire is equal to BIL. Yes the force of conducting wire is equal to BIL. The force is equal to the magnetic flux density times by the current times by the length of the wire perpendicular to the magnetic field. So obviously this formula only applies if the field and the wire are perpendicular to each other. But we can get a more general expression um, for, let's, for let's say when the wire is tilted. So over here we can say that look the wire has been tilted, we know that there is the angle theta. Theta is the angle between the wire and the magnetic field. As you can see we're going to get maximum force here because theta is 90. And look, this formula works, because F is equal to BIL sine 90, it will be a maximum here. Yes, because sine 90 is 1. And over here, if theta is going to be equal to 0, because look, the angle between the wire and the field is 0, therefore sine 0 is 0, the force is minimum here. So look, it works in terms of uh, our physics. We know we'll get a maximum force when the wire is perpendicular to the field. And last of all, I just walked you through this very simple problem of pulling out the information from the question and plugging it in to get your results. And that's it, guys. I shall see you next time for another cool session in electromagnetism and physics. Take care. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.